Hi guys and girls on YouTube, a little quick video here to show you, um, it looks like the lockdown's coming to an end, um, as far as I know um, I can reopen in about a week's time uh, next Monday, so uh, I'm up here, I'm tidying up ready, um, getting ready to restart, I've cleaned all the main bench off, um, this is probably the only time you'll see this bench with nothing at all on, um, so um, I thought the perfect opportunity, well it's all nice and tidy, to uh, make a quick little video here guys so the item we're going to be looking at is in this little cardboard box but first I'll tell you the story that goes with it so um, back in Buxton there was a TV repair shop on the main high street and I've been going there since, a, since I was a schoolboy. Uh, I've been buying TV repair parts off the, uh, off the man who owned the shop and um, over the years I got very very friendly with him um, now back in the 1980s um, he rang me up one day and he said um, I'm having a clear out at the shop he said I'm clearing all the cellar out I've hired a skip um, would you mind coming round on Sunday and giving me a hand for a few hours um, all you'll be doing is um, carrying the stuff upstairs for me and chucking it in the skip and I said yeah that's fine so I turned up Sunday in my van um, I parked at the side of his shop next to the skip and um, Oh, about a couple of hours later, he came up to have a look in the skip and see how much room there was. And um, he came upstairs and he looked in the skip and he said, there's nothing in the skip. Well, there wasn't anything in the skip because I'd loaded it all into the back of my van. Um, now, most of this stuff was all crap. Um, there were radios, car radios, cassette players, all bits with backs and fronts and knobs and things missing. And I kept all this stuff for years and in the end I just chucked it away because it was all rubbish. Um, but one of the items here, um, I've never actually done anything with this, I've never tried it. Um, this is one of the items that um, I got from him. So uh, let's just take a quick look what's in the box. So the, the TV shop in question had actually, it had been a TV shop, repair shop, for as long as anybody could remember. Um, in fact, I remember my dad saying to me once that when he was a small boy, um, his mum used to send him there with a glass accumulator to have it charged up. Um, now, apparently this shop had never ever closed down. Um, when the owners retired or decided to move on, the shop was always sold as a going concern to somebody else. So the item in here uh, was given to me by the, the, pre, the present owner. Um, it actually it predates him. This must have been left in the cellar by the owner before. So let's take the lid off and have a look. Uh, now, as you can see, it's on Siemens Eddie Swan um, transistor tester from the 1960s. Um, now, I know it's from the 1960s because if we take it out of the box, we turn the box over, um, it actually says on there, well, I don't know what it says, radio and television something, um, but that's the address. Um, Messrs Watson Radio and TV, Terrace Road, Buxton, Derbyshire, and it's dated 21st of the 12th, 1960. Um, now I always I collect newspapers and things as well. Um, it costs two and three to send it. So I've been looking through some old newspapers um, and I found um, this actual place, Watson's. Right, so here we have. Um, a Buxton advertiser, um, it's dated Friday, December the 12th, 1958. And um, if we turn over to the back page, uh, and we scroll down, that is the TV shop in question, uh, Watson's Marketplace Buxton. Um, and it actually says there, Echo Dealers since 1928. Um, so it had been there a long long time now um this item in question uh, this actually came from watson's radio and tv um, this is what we're going to be looking at in the video now um, it looks like it's been in its box a long long time because it's been in absolutely mint condition um, there's even a label still attached to it now i've never even tried this um, so I think what I'll do is I'll take the back off and I'll have a look what sort of battery it takes um, and see if we can power the thing up. Right, so that's the back undone. Um, there's two countersunk screws and uh, four strange ones that obviously 
um, obviously act as feet as well when it's sitting on the back uh, I've just looked what it says on that label and it says inspected 21st of the 6th 1960 um, now there's no instruction book with it and I can see why now because the instructions are actually on the back of the case um, so this is the first time I've looked at this it's the first time I've ever opened it up let's pull off the back um, and as you can see it's in absolutely mint condition inside um, I did wonder if this had never been used um, but it looks like it has been used because there's an ever ready PP4 battery inside um, now I can't remember the last time I saw PP4 it's an awful long time ago um, I think probably the best thing to do um, is to probably work with the PP3 but I think the best thing to do now is just power it from a bench power supply and uh, I suppose in the 1960s most transistors were germanium so we'll put a germanium transistor in it so we'll just stop the camera while we get a bench power supply right okay so it's connected to a bench power supply um, I've selected like an OC44 type transistor uh, for the simple reason it's germanium and it's also got very long leads that plug onto the test uh, um, the test connector now um, I've read the instructions here um, obviously either the thing's not working or it's not working properly because the um, maybe the capacitors have dried up with age um, I'll just stop the camera and I'll just tilt it a bit and I'll show you right so if you look at the meter there I've set the test current for 2 milliamps um, now on the instructions here um, it says to um, where we go oh vary the current gain control to produce an audible note Gain can be read from calibrated control when setting is such that note stops. Um, so I'm presuming that's the one that says gain. It says you turn that until the noise stops. Now the noise has stopped there and it says read the gain from the calibrator scale. Well that's only indicating um, uh, HFE gain of 10. Um, now I've actually measured this transistor on my peak tester uh, and it has a gain of about 70 um, so clearly um, this isn't working right um, probably because it's so old um, I've also noticed that the on and off switch is a bit intermittent so I've had to bridge that over um, with a crocodile clip so I would imagine um, these capacitors want changing now the strange capacitors these because um, they're electrolytic but both ends have a red cap instead of a red and a black um, and if you take a close look um, it says plasi electrolytic 8 microfarad 12 volt uh, reversible so um, I presume that's something to do with it testing NPN and PNP um, that these are reversible but anyway it, it does work to a fashion it works on the the leakage but it doesn't work on measuring the gain um, so I might just um, take a quick look at them capacitors with an ESR meter um, but I'm not going to change them because that would spoil um, the originality of this because um, I can't see myself ever using it um, that's where I've linked over the on and off switch um, it's more of more of a collector's item than anything this but uh, yeah so there you go guys and that's the story that goes with it um, so uh, maybe see you in the next video then alright guys thanks for watching